and that 1.3% of the sample is 50 years old. All right, and that's 11 observations. Now, household income is the same uh, frequency. It's a frequency table, so it's the same interpretation. But one interesting thing about this is that the um, table actually uh, cuts out at 100 rows. That SPSS does this on default. So you have to right-click the table and then set rows to display and change that to 130 so that we can see everyone. All right, and I'll get to that in a, in a second. I'll go, go to the highest uh, level in, in the earnings and uh, household income in a second. So here's the age uh, um, histogram. I had a little blank there. This is the age histogram depicting the uh, number of people uh, that are associated with each observation. Now, it's not easy to see this because the scale uh, is increasing at 10 years and I'll actually do let's see if I can do that at one year and see what it looks like it's not too bad so I just changed the scale from t 10 increment to one increment and I'm actually going to increase the size actually before I do that we can see that the mean uh, of age is 35 here and standard deviation is 8 and a sample size 8.0 and a sample size of 850 uh, I usually delete that uh, get it out of the way because I want the chart um, to be a bit bigger. Actually, I didn't do it this time, but uh, I do want to increase the size of my chart because I want to see that x-axis a little bit better. Um, so I'll go like that. Okay. So now we can see that um, it's actually gone back to the it's defaulted itself uh, down to a major increment of one, but it's not displaying it because it doesn't have enough space to do so. Um, I might not get away with this. It might not actually do it for me. Let's see if it does a trick. Now it won't actually scale major increment one, ten to sixty. Let me get rid of these margins. Zero. Zero. Ah, there we go. It's finally done it. Um, that was actually kind of an important thing. Let me actually increase the size of this again. Uh, but I'm only going to increase the width. This is taking a bit longer than I thought, but we can see here that uh, 20, the age of 20, from memory it was two people. If we go back to the histogram, uh, the frequency table rather, frequency table, 20 people uh, for for the age of 20, we had two people, and that's what the histogram does. It takes each of those pieces of information in the frequency table, and it plots it into a chart. So we can see that there's actually two observations here, because on the, on the y-axis here is frequency. And if I double-click that and change my scale, again, scale to increases of 1, let's hope that actually looks okay, yeah, that's all right. So we can see that uh, two core is up to here, and that is uh, this bar here represents two observations, and it's for the age of twenty. And then for age twenty-one, we can see that it corresponds to twelve. It goes up to here. Well, most people are not that young. The mode in this chart is here which is um, 50 it looks like about 51 observations and that corresponds to that corresponds to 29 I believe yeah 29 we can see the age here 29 is that bar there it's not great because the charts a bit too big but um, this is uh, basically what it looks like and let me shrink the chart so that it goes back down again into a more viewable way into the window. All right, so this is what the chart looks like. It's mostly normal. This is what the normal curve is. And we can see that it's not perfectly fitting within that. It looks like there's a, there's a little too many people on this section here. But overall, we would say that's a pretty normal distribution. It's, it's still a little bit positively skewed. 
but in my opinion it's not so bad i don't i'm mean, this isn't a full analysis of testing normal distributions it's really just about how to do a histogram and, and what the histogram looks like in relation to a frequency 